No doubt. Uh, Pete, Manchester City have been in the news for all sorts of things uh, in the past week, one of those being the director of football now leaving uh, 2025. What are the chances and, and how does this affect the chances of Pep signing a contract extension and staying past this season? Yeah, I think uh, the decision of Tixi Bagheristein to leave at the end of the season is just going to add fuel to the fire that maybe Pep Guardiola will also leave Manchester City uh, come the end of the season. Obviously, we know Pep is out of contract uh, at the end of the season and uh, obviously the Manchester City fans are, are doing their best to try and persuade uh, Pep to stay at the club where uh, the bought that new banner and unveiled it last weekend uh, in the game against Fulham to try and say, convince Pep to, to stay at the club as well. But, yeah, obviously, Bagheristown and Guardiola have gone hand in hand recently. Obviously, Bagheristown was the man who uh, appointed uh, Pep Guardiola at Barcelona, had great success there, and obviously he was one of the main driving factors in Pep making the move to Manchester City as well. And we all know the, the success the two of them have had together during their time at uh, the Etihad Stadium as well. Um, Again, Pep Guardiola is his own man. Uh, although Bagheristein is leaving, I don't think it will have a massive bearing on whether he decides he wants to stay at Manchester City or not. Uh, that'll be Pep's decision, and I don't think Manchester City will be putting any pressure on Pep as well to make a decision on his future. If he wants to stay, there'll be a contract for him there to sign. It all depends on Pep Guardiola. Does he feel he needs a rest after nine years at the same club? It's probably this is the longest he's been at any uh, club during his managerial career. I'm sure Manchester City will do everything they can to try and convince him to stay. But as I said, I think it was always a plan this summer for Bagheristein to leave. Obviously, the timing of this news is interesting, considering we had the news about City's legal case uh, with the Premier League over commercial deals and everything else. So the timing was a bit strange. But as I said, um, the two have worked hand in hand over the last few years as well. So as I said, it's just going to add more fuel to the fire that maybe Pep could also leave the club come the end of the season. It'll add fuel to the fire, won't it? Because we love talking about it in the media. That's what we love. Any little hint of uh, any kind of speculation. If Pep could potentially leave Manchester City. Listen, every everything's got a, a lifespan. As Pep has at Manchester City, I generally don't see this departure having any impact on what he does. You look at, I mean, I've, I've recently been obviously travelling a lot, as you know, around Europe. I've watched the, the recent Manchester City documentaries and you get to see more of Pep and you watch the insight and you see the person. He's not influenced by anybody. He's his own man. He's his own character. He's his own person the strength of character, the strength of the will to win and desire. The one thing that I'll say about Pep from what I've noticed is when his desire drops, when that passion drops, when he doesn't want to go on the training ground, you see what he puts into the players on the training ground. And if you haven't watched that documentary, go and watch it because it's brilliant. I, listen, I'm not a Man City fan. I love football and I bought into that documentary and you got to see a different side to, to players that you might not necessarily see, but certainly to the manager and his, his passion and his, you know, his drive to do the job that he does. The only thing that will stop him being Manchester City manager is when he wakes up one day and just doesn't have that, which I can't see that any time soon. And, and Paul, that may not be the only turnover potentially at Manchester City. There's rumours that Kevin De Bruyne has received a huge offer uh, to move to Saudi in the summer. Do you think this could be his last year in England? Do you think that's tied to if Pep leaves? What do you think about the chances of the two of them either staying or going? I think there's, there's question marks over a lot of the Man City squad at the moment because you know, they're not... Well, they're unbeaten this season. They played, you know, won five and drawn two, and they're not top of the league. So we're all talking about players leaving and the manager potentially leaving. Um, it is going to happen. You look at Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp's gone. You look at Virgil Van Dijk. He's of an age in a similar way to Kevin De Bruyne. So the, there is a change in the guard every now and then at clubs. Whether it all happens at once, whether it all happens, you know, sporadically, Jurgen Klopp's gone. At some point, Virgil Van Dijk will go. At some point, Mo Salah will go. And it's exactly the same with Manchester City. The thing that they'll try not to happen is for it to all go at once because it will leave a, leave a huge void. Pep Guardiola will go at some point. Kevin De Bruyne will go at some point. You know, and there's players in that squad. Edison, I know we're going to talk about Edison. He's another one. The, the deals there in, in the Saudi Pro League, I work a lot in the Saudi Pro League and I see that league growing. Um, it's not going away. The, the, the youngsters that are coming into that league, there's maybe not as much money being spent, but the quality of players in a younger age and that league is always going to be there. And for the likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Mo Salah, who have had those decorated, glittering careers, there's always going to be that opportunity for them to go there. And there's always going to be the opportunity, whenever they're playing in the Premier League, for, for that move to happen. So to say that Kevin De Bruyne or Edison or whoever, or Mo Salah, won't have the head turned by that, at some point there will be a serious offer. And you know they will, they will look at it at, at some point. It's, and it's down to them. And I think you talk about players like that, you talk about De Bruyne, you talk about Mo Salah, um, Edison, those are the type of players that they decide when they go. 
that it's, their futures aren't decided for them. They're the type of players who decide when they go and when their environments change around them, and they'll, they'll know right. They'll know when it's the right time. And, and Pete, you know, speaking of potentially De Bruyne leaving, there, Man City are interested in Gorgi Sudikov uh, as another number ten, who's who's been big in the Champions League over the last year or so. Could he be a possible replacement for Kevin De Bruyne come next year? Yeah, time? I'm sure he's somebody who's on their list, as he's probably on the list of uh, most of the Europe's top clubs. Um, very exciting player from Shakhtar Donetsk. has done really well for them, and as you said, playing in the Champions League on a regular basis as well. So he obviously, it's really enhanced his reputation amongst the top clubs in Europe. Um, as you said, City will have to to start life without Kevin De Bruyne at some point sooner rather than later probably due to his age and everything else and Sudikov is a very talented playmaker as he's proved for club and country over the last 18 months as well so it's no surprise that Manchester City are one of a number of clubs looking at him um, there's also been talk that Liverpool are interested uh, Tottenham and Arsenal have also shown interest in the Ukrainian so no surprise that uh, City are one of the clubs looking at him they're going to be doing their due diligence on some of the best young talent in Europe and there's no doubts that Sudikov is right up there um, in the current transfer market as one of the best young players in Europe and uh, I think it could be a great fit for the Premier League if one of those interested clubs does follow up their interest in him as well but he's under a long contract at Shakhtar Donetsk so again it would be a big transfer fee I think to, to lure him away as we know Shakhtar are not the easiest club to deal with as well um, so I think I don't think there'll be anything imminent on Sudikov. There'll be no move in January from, uh, let's put it that way, but maybe come the summer, um, some of those interested parties might uh, step up their interest in the 22-year-old. Do you think he's as good as Mudrich, Pete? I, mean, I know they grew up together, the pair of them, didn't they? He signed a new contract at the same club together and they grew up and he, I mean, you look at what Mudrich has done since he's come to Chelsea and it, he's flattered to deceive really, hasn't he? I mean, playing for Shakhtar, playing in the Champions League, getting all the experience. I mean, Sudikov, what is he? he's only 22, he's got 20, 22 international caps, played in the Champions League, in a similar vein to Mudrich. I just worry that he's, for, well, I don't worry, but I, I kind of compare him a little bit to Mudrich and wonder if he'd be able to, to handle the Premier League. Yeah, that'll be the big question mark probably over him. Could he handle the Premier League, uh, the physical side of it and everything else? Obviously, when Mudrich arrived, there was a whole uh, high expectations on him. What we saw, what he did uh, in the Champions League for Shakhtar Donetsk, just haven't seen that replicated at Chelsea so far. He's struggling to get a game under Enzo Maresca right now as well. Obviously, Arsenal probably felt they got away with one when uh, Chelsea sneaked in and signed him from right under the noses. Um, there's no doubt there's a, there's a real top player in Mudrick, but we haven't seen the best of it. Sudikov, he's showing glimpses that he could be a real top player. And as I, I do imagine him that he will make a move to one of the big clubs in Europe probably within the next 12 to 18 months and then it'll be up to him to see if he can adapt uh, to that new culture, the new style of football and everything else but there's no doubt that there is a very talented player in there and the rest will be up to him to see if he can uh, make a name for himself. And Paul, you mentioned Ederson earlier, him also always being linked with Saudi at the same time De Bruyne is. Could we see Manchester City go for Diogo Costa as a potential goalkeeper replacement for Ederson in the long term? I watched him first-hand last week against Man United. I wasn't convinced. I've seen him a couple of times. Um, yeah, he's got good technical ability and he's got good awareness around his goal. But actually, the two Manchester United goals were carbon copies of each other, what he should have saved, both of them in the first half. Um, they were carbon copies of each other in the way that he behaved with his positioning, the way that his body weight was rocking backwards. The first one hit the underside of his foot. The second one hit the underside of his hand. There's a couple of technical issues, as in with his shot stopping. I mean, listen, at Porto, he's not going to be as tested. Um, you could argue he wouldn't be at Manchester City, but the, the spotlight's going to be on him. I mean, he's, he's still only 25 years old, played over 100 league games for Porto. The stats are there. There's one thing, you'd, def you'd definitely bring him on for penalties, wouldn't you? He's a great penalty uh, technician. He's, a great, he's an expert at penalties. Um, he's got a, a good handful of international caps as well. Everything stacks up credentially for him. Yeah, he's, he's the type of goalkeeper that on paper with the, the stats, the data and the numbers and the figures that you would look at. But there's just a couple of issues technically that I would put under scrutiny uh, and I'd look at when I'm, when I'm looking at the batch of goalkeepers that they're potentially going to look at if and whenever Edison is to move on.